He was the man who established the first French empire. To the French people, he was a hero. To the French royalty, he was their demise. Napoleon Bonaparte was a scourge to European leaders, but the countries he conquered joined a vast empire spanning from Spain into Russia. Along with his control over Europe, Napoleon Bonaparte conquered territories in the West Indies, Americas, and Northern Africa. Napoleon may have been the greatest conqueror history has ever seen. Napoleon Bonaparte was born on August 15, 1769, on Corsica, an island in the Mediterranean Sea. Just before his birth, the island of Corsica was conquered by French forces, making baby Napoleon and his family subjects of King Louis XV. At the age of nine, Napoleon joined a military school in France. He excelled in math and history, and after seven years, he received a commission as an officer in the artillery division of the French army. Then, in the summer of 1789, the French Revolution began as Parisian mobs stormed the Bastille. The French Revolution concluded with the removal of the monarchy. The country was relabeled as a republic to be governed by an assembly known as the Convention. Louis XVI was guillotined in 1793, and the French monarchy died with him. With the dismantling of the monarchy and aristocracy, France was thrown into what became known as the Reign of Terror. It is estimated that around 300,000 suspects were arrested and 17,000 people were executed during this time. It is during this tumultuous period that Napoleon began to gain fame. His first major victory came when he defeated royalist forces supported by the British Navy at the port of Toulon. After the battle, he was celebrated as a war hero. In 1795, Napoleon gained even more fame when he fired upon royalists and defeated anti-republic forces that threatened the new government. His battles against the forces that opposed the new republic gained him favour with the leaders in the new government. Young General Bonaparte was appointed commander-in-chief of the French military, a turn of events eerily similar to the rise to power of Emperor Palpatine in Star Wars. It was seven days later when Napoleon married his first wife, Josephine de Beauharnais, although they would later be divorced because she did not birth a male heir for Napoleon. With his new power and prestige bestowed upon him by the French government, Napoleon Bonaparte began his military conquest of the region. He started by defeating Austrian forces and forcing Philip von Cobenzl to sign the Treaty of Campo Formio in 1797, which gave France control over the majority of the Austrian nation. By 1799, Napoleon had acquired vast new territories for France and Europe. He shifted his focus to Egypt, where he hoped to dominate the Eastern Mediterranean and disrupt British control of India. During this campaign, French soldiers discovered the Rosetta Stone by accident. The Rosetta Stone was brought to Europe and eventually translated, unlocking the mysteries of Egyptian hieroglyphics. Upon returning to France, in 1799, Napoleon began to create a plan to overthrow the French government. This plot would come to be known as the coup d'etat of 18 Brumaire. Napoleon succeeded in dismantling the current governing body and set up a new government called the Consulate, with himself as first consul. Napoleon had now conquered Eastern Europe and the French government. By now, Napoleon had been first consul for almost a year. In this time, he had instituted many popular reforms, such as free secondary education and creating the Bank of France to improve the stability of the empire. On December 24, 1800 though, Georges Cadoudal led monarchist rebels in an attempt to assassinate Napoleon Bonaparte with a homemade bomb. The assassination was planned to kill Bonaparte while he was at the opera. As Napoleon sat in the Theatre of the Republic and the Arts in Paris watching the premiere of The Creation by Joseph Haydn, an explosion erupted outside of the building. The assassination plot had failed and would be called the Infernal Machine Plot. It ended with the death of several people outside the theatre, but left Napoleon unharmed. This marked the first time that a bomb had been used for an assassination attempt, and it was during this period in world history that the word terrorism was first used in its current form. The term became synonymous with acts that attempted to dismantle or destroy a leader or ideology. After gaining almost absolute power and surviving more than one attempt on his life, Napoleon set his sights on conquest once again. In 1802, Napoleon sent French forces to the West Indies to secure and protect France's interests in the region. He had decided it was time for an empire in the Americas and began to assert dominance in the New World. He was mildly successful, but before Napoleon could make his American empire a reality, he had a realization. His navy was not powerful enough to defeat the British. France suffered several defeats at the hands and ships of the rival nation. Napoleon decided to consolidate his military and sold the Louisiana Territory to the United States, which would come to be known as the Louisiana a purchase. In return for the land, Napoleon received money that France badly needed. In 1804, the consulate was transformed into an empire, and Napoleon was officially named Emperor of the First French Empire. The following year, what was left of
of Austria and Russia allied themselves with the British, Napoleon decided it was time to bring the rest of Europe to their knees and began plans to invade England. But in a major defeat at the Battle of Trafalgar, the British naval fleet commanded by Admiral Nelson destroyed the French Navy and ended Napoleon's plans to invade England. Realising that the British Navy was again too powerful, Napoleon turned his attention to conquering Russia and the Holy Roman Empire. In 1805, French forces defeated Tsar Alexander I of Russia and Holy Roman Emperor Francis II at the Battle of Austerlitz. This eventually led to Tsar Alexander I signing a treaty with Napoleon and giving Napoleon control of all of Eastern Europe. There was a time of relative peace in the First French Empire until 1812, when Russia withdrew from the treaty and once again allied itself with Britain. Napoleon made the decision that Russia must be invaded and completely conquered if he was going to maintain control of the region. The invasion led to the bloodiest battle of the Napoleonic Wars. The Battle of Borodino was fought just outside Moscow. The Russian forces were estimated to have suffered around 45,000 casualties, while the French lost approximately 30,000 men. Although both sides took great losses, Tsar Alexander I refused to surrender and Napoleon refused to abandon his conquest. But then, the Russian winter did what the Russian army could not. Due to lack of supplies and resources, the French army was forced to retreat from the bitter Russian winter and Napoleon returned to Paris. In 1813, the combined forces of Russia, Prussia, Austria and Sweden defeated Napoleon's armies in Europe. This forced Napoleon to abdicate his throne on April 11, 1814. The European leaders decided to banish Napoleon to the Mediterranean island of Elba. However, due to his craftiness and help from loyal supporters, Napoleon escaped captivity and returned to France in 1815. He reclaimed the throne in what was known as the Hundred Days. After returning to France, Napoleon re-established his power and began his conquest once again. He swept across Europe, meeting British forces and their allies at the Battle of Waterloo. The British commander, the Duke of Wellington, decided to wait for Napoleon to attack, rather than use precious men and resources in an advancing assault. Napoleon's desire for conquest pushed him to take the offensive. He sent his forces into battle. At first, Napoleon was largely successful using infantry and cavalry charges. His men were disciplined and believed in their leader. Wellington and his generals were confident that the battle was going to be lost due to the unrelenting French attacks. However, in a stroke of lucky timing, Prussian forces joined the British army and helped them repel the French advances. Napoleon decided to use his Imperial Guard, the force always reserved to decide battles, to end the war. But due to a miscalculation, Napoleon split his Imperial Guard instead of sending them into battle together. This led to both smaller forces being defeated and a retreat by the French army. The Battle of Waterloo made Great Britain the dominant global power for the next 100 years. After Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo, the leaders of Europe decided he needed to be sent further away. Napoleon Bonaparte was exiled to St. Helena, a remote volcanic island in the South Atlantic Ocean. The British kept two Navy frigates on patrol of the island at all times to ensure that Napoleon stayed in exile. Napoleon eventually died of cancer on May 5, 1821, on St. Helena at the age of 51. He was originally buried under three stone slabs beneath two willow trees, but later his body was moved back to France, where his remains to this day. Due to Napoleon's fame, he became a legend. As with all legends, incredible stories were told and myths created about the man. Conspiracy theories that Napoleon was poisoned instead of dying from natural causes spread like wildfire. People believed that his remains were stolen on the way back to Europe and secretly buried at an undisclosed location in Paris. You have probably heard the claim that Napoleon was extremely short. This was actually one of the myths that came out of the Napoleonic legends. It was true that Napoleon was called Le Petit Caporal, or the Little Corporal, but this name had nothing to do with his height. Instead, his men used it as a term of endearment. It was said that when Napoleon died, he was 5 feet 2 inches tall. However, it has been determined that the measurement provided was in French inches, which at the time were longer than English inches. When the measurement is converted, Napoleon was closer to 5 feet 6 inches tall, making him 4 inches taller. This means that Napoleon was actually average height for a male in Europe at the time he was alive. Was Napoleon the greatest conqueror ever? His military, political and social accomplishments were impressive, and some still exist today. He survived several assassination attempts and escaped exile only to return to Europe and very nearly take back his empire. Regardless of his height or legends, Napoleon Bonaparte was most assuredly a force to be reckoned with in the 18th and 19th centuries. He conquered vast amounts of land across Europe, controlled several territories overseas, and marched deep into Russia. Europe had not been unified under one ruler since the Roman Empire, and Napoleon Bonaparte was the first conqueror to succeed in creating an empire in Europe and abroad where so many before him had failed, even if only briefly.